Somera mudiro lyo nge wagidua Maryland High School elisangi wentebe Somero lya bawala na balenzi Dusomesa arts and sciences okuvira dala kusini esoka okutukira dala kusini eyo mukaga ngali sangi ba muchifechi wewe po bulunje tuline bisule byo mulembe Science Laboratory Sakoni Computer Lab Wamune She gives you a number but your pen didn't work and the bus is gone Get a pen you can rely on. Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage us children to be excellent. Wamune. Congo University. A private chartered university that offers world-class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us? Wamune. Kids Kingdom Kindergarten and Daycare. So many of you are to. Oh, Musa, the red one. Oh, we don't call it video. If you go to any side, you are not a monster. To be in a, I think I am a web designer. I work as a new. You kill a security and car. I am so many good guys. I am too clever. I am so many savage. Turn up. I am too good. I am a man. I am not too much. I am a man. 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 I am Yes, a uh, good morning to all of you, uh, my fellow students. I want to welcome you to this Saturday morning. Uh, we are here for a physics lesson, and today we shall be discussing a new topic. I told you physics has four sections, A, B, C, and D. We have so far discussed Section B, which has waves and opt, uh, optics as uh, wave as, as an optic. We have discussed section D, which has partly electrostatics and electricity. And I want us to move to section A today, as you see in the background, which has optics. So today we shall be dealing with optics, but I want to remind you that as we proceed to discuss um, and look at opportunities and ways how we can improve our performance in physics, today we shall be looking at optics. Optics is a, a branch in physics that looks at the relationship of how people see activities. In other words, it is a branch that enables us to be able to see I usually tell my students that some people actually look, but do, they don't see. So optics is one of the areas we are going to look at. It deals with light. Some people call it light. Some people call it light. And this appears in section A with two questions. And candidates are expected to do only one number. Only one number. We shall move straight away and look at a few salient issues on section A. Section A deals with the issue of light. But before I start, as usual, I want to remind you that the major function of the brain is to forget. The major function of the brain, I repeat, is to forget. And the simple meaning is that if you don't remind the brain, it will forget. It will forget. Let us ask ourselves, what is light? We all see because there is light. Whether you know physics or not, you see because of light. When we are looking at forms of energy, light is one of them. We define light as a form of energy that enables us to see 
or a form of energy that causes the, the sensation of sight. If simply put, we can say light is a form of energy that enables us to see. A form of energy that enables us to see. And when we are looking at light, we look at another question. What is a ray? I want to inform my dear students that today's lesson will run through all classes. Yes, I am aware this is 510 stroke 2. But what I'm going to discuss is going to run from senior 2, senior 5, and senior 6. And my fellow learners, I don't want to encourage you to say I, I know all this and I should go and sleep. Please take note. It is what we actually think we know that normally comes and finds uh, some students unprepared. A ray can be simply defined as a path taken by, by light. A path taken by light. Illustrated diagrammatically. by a line with an arrow, by a line with an arrow. When we move from a ray, the next important question is a beam. What is a beam? A beam is a correction. Of light rays. A beam is a correction of light rays. A correction of light rays. Now, when we move from that point, we look at types of beams. We have three types of beams. One is a convergent beam. To converge is to come to one point. To converge is to come to one point. And if we look at right rays, as we have said, a ray is a direction or a path taken by light. If light rays are converging at a point A, then we say it's a convergent beam. The other, point, uh, the other beam is a divergent. To diverge is the opposite of a convergent beam. Um, I can say it is the same diagram, but we simply change the arrow that the light moves from one point, but moves to another point. Convergent are usually re related with the situation where we are probably in uh, a, a time in school, a school setting where we are, for example, out of break time, and they ring the bell and you are expected to go back to class. So if you look at air as a classroom, you will all be expected to go back to class. And divergent, if you look at, again, A as a classroom, and uh, you are expected to go for break time or lunch time, then you are all supposed to disperse away from point A and move to your areas of interest. Then lastly, we have a beam that we call a parallel beam. 
For a parallel beam, I usually use different diagrams. It could be drawn in that, man, uh, that pattern. It could be drawn in this pattern. It could be drawn in that pattern. As long as you indicate that it is a correction of light rays. Without an arrow, remember that you are actually not illustrating a beam. Without an arrow, remember you are not illustrating a beam. We have said a beam is a collection of light rays. And the ray is simply a line with an arrow that shows an, a ray that shows the direction where the light is going. So a beam, we have three types of beams. As I said, this can be captured by a senior two student, senior one third term, and a senior five student. And of course, a senior six student. I expect most of you to have gone through this area, but I want us to revise. The major function of the brain, I, re I repeat, is to forget. Now, when we finish this, we usually bring about the principle of reversibility of light. To reverse is to change direction and move in the opposite direction. The principle of reversibility of light simply states that light rays are reversible. It simply states that light rays are reversible. That means that if one is able to, to block the direction of path of light, then the light would retrace its way back to where it is actually coming from or to the source. If someone blocks this light ray or this light ray which is divergent, it would be able to be reflected and it goes back to point A. So the principle of reversibility of light states that light rays are reversible. Light rays are reversible. Uh, we talk about reflection on plane surfaces next. Repre reflection on plane surfaces. And <clears throat> I believe every serious human being, every serious, I use, I use the word serious, usually look at themselves before they move out of the house. What do they use? They use a mirror. How can you form a simple mirror? You can form a simple mirror by simply blocking one face of a glass, either using a book or using an object that we say is opaque. So if I blocked one's face by shading as I have done, <coughs> I would form what I would call a simple mirror. And a simple mirror has this side as, we call it the silvered surface, and this side as the reflecting surface. In other words, the glass surface. So if light is incident in a ray that I will call OA, if this point is A, it will indeed be reflected off in another ray that we shall shortly label. But the point where the ray meets the glass, which I have called A, is incident at 90 degrees. The ray is incident at 90 degrees, and 
that simple diagram you see gives us a number of points that we need to identify with. As starting students, one, this angle is given a letter I, scientifically. This angle is given a letter R, scientifically. And this angle is given a letter G. And by angle geometry, this angle is also equal to G. So to label that diagram, we can start and say that angle I, which one could call angle O, A, N, is the angle of incidence. Angle R, which one could call Angle um, if I call this point um, M and this M prime, I'll call that one angle B A M is the angle of reflection. The other angle we indicate there, I've called it G. This is the same as angle O, A, M prime, which is the same as this is angle N, N, A, B. Angle O A M prime is the same as angle B A M. And this is the same as the glancing angle. Glancing angle. In the ordinary level physics, uh, some questions can be asked in ordinary level physics. Some questions can be asked. I will, uh, I will refer to this later. We have a n point a n is the normal line. It's the normal line. O a is the incident ray. Um, AB is the refracted ray. <clears throat> and the point A is the point of incidence. The point of incidence. And of course, M, M prime is the plane mirror. I want to repeat that the plane mirror has two faces. <coughs> it has the refracting face, which I have labeled as this side, and the silvered surface, which I have labeled as the other side. The concept I'm looking at today is extremely important, especially for all physics students. This does not exclude the level, the level of students. It covers all students that are offering physics, starting from senior one, including primary civil. The physics I'm discussing today caters for all levels of students, whether primary, whether secondary, 
even university it is basic science knowledge now after we have finished looking at the basics of optics we look at the laws of what we call reflection i have said every human being whether you know physics or not many times look at a mirror to look at how they look like but the mirror does not only show you your image what you see through the mirror is your image and i want to emphasize <clears throat> that if you want to be excellent you want to be successful look at the mirror look at the person you are seeing through the mirror and feel like you want to be like that person feel like you want to be like that person of course of course what you see is your image if you want to be like that person then you must be admiring who that person is there are two laws of reflection two of them i don't want to say this is the first law the second law but we say that the angle <coughs> of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence <coughs> i have said angle i is equal to angle r to emphasize and i would put that if this was my mirror i have mentioned this this may be common in ordinary level i can choose to put this as 30 degrees if i put this as 30 degrees and i shade this side then i am referring to a mirror without shading whatever i had drawn would not be physics if this is a normal ideally this is supposed to be 90 degrees as i emphasize that and that means that if this was x my x would be equal to i and my x therefore plus 30 degrees mathematically would be equal to 90 and therefore my x would be equal to 60 degrees by calculation and therefore my angle of incidence would be equal to 60 for an o level student this is very rare for a level but you need to know the concept that this x because of this law is supposed to be equal to y that x therefore is equal to y and is equal to 60 degrees in accordance with this law of reflection that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence mathematically and i can even emphasize that x in this particular case that um not x that the glancing angle is therefore equivalent to 30 degrees which i could call g here by angle properties the value of the glancing angle is 30 and consequently if this is x then the whole of this should also be 90 but this is the glancing angle and therefore it is 30 degrees that is good for ordinary level students for primary 7 students in their pre or primary 6 7 There are two laws of reflection. We have simply stated one and uh, we have said that the angle of incidence which would be i here is equal to the angle of reflection which would be r. The second one states that the incident ray
The normal, the normal is not a ray. And the reflected ray at the point of incidence lie in the same plane. I repeat, the incident ray, the normal, and the reflected ray at a point of incidence all lie in. I want to emphasize the in because that is the point where students usually fail from. They all lie in the same plane. <clears throat> they all lie in the same plane. The incident ray, the normal, it's a line, doesn't have an arrow, remember, from the start. And the refracted ray, at this point, which we call the point of incidence, I had called it point A, lie in the same plane. And at this stage, I will give my first assignment. My first assignment is that my candidates of senior 6 and S5 and S4 should be able to verify an experiment or to describe an experiment to verify the two laws of reflection as simply stated. Describe an experiment to verify the laws of reflection. I will give a hint and then we shall proceed. I will give a hint and then we shall proceed. If you are asked a question to describe the laws of reflection of light, one, you definitely must use what we call a soft board. You must use a soft board this is apparatus. I will emphasize on the apparatus required. You must use a soft board. Two, you must use um, drawing pins. These are sometimes called safety pins. The safety pins are supposed to fix a plain sheet of paper. On the soft board, you must use, um, of course, a plain mirror. And you must use optical pins. I think I carried one optical pin here which I should be able to demonstrate. Now an optical pin, the camera may not be able to show it clearly because of the distance but looks like this and um, this is an optical pin. Then this one is a safety pin. This safety pin can work at the thumbnail pane. Um, the thumbnail pane um, is the pin that can be used in the place of what I have called um, the, the safety pin. This one. Very small. But we have other short pins that we call thumbnail that are used uh, for most offices that are used on notes boards to fix items. Now, this one is the optical. And this one can represent, for those who do not have thumbnail pins, can represent a safety pin. Now, 
I said I am simply illustrating what you require to describe or to verify this experiment. Uh, and I will use a simple diagram and then I will proceed. After having these items, assuming this blackboard is my softboard, fix the softboard is a small piece of 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 uh, of a board that is supposed to be soft popularly used for making seedings um, during the old time of that nature fix on um, um, a plain sheet of paper if you don't have enough safety pins two pins can be alternately used to fix that plain paper there if you have enough you can put a pin on either side. And then we usually say draw a horizontal line that is going to act as our mirror line. And then you use the other important thing we need to use here is we call it, uh, I can call it um, plastine. Plastine. And if you don't have plastic, you can actually use chewing gum or bubble gum. To fix the mirror, the mirror is supposed to be mounted vertically, vertically facing the observer on one side. So if the mirror is mounted vertically, it means it would be standing vertically at 90 degrees. And therefore the silvered surface would be touching the board. And then using a protractor the other important apparatus is a protractor using a protractor a beginning incident ray i will say say of 10 degrees is drawn when we say draw a ray you simply put your protractor there and you measure your 10 degrees there and then you remove the protractor and draw the ray up to that point. Observing from this side or this face, another ray is identified using two pins. So we have two pins here, P1 and P2. Using pins P3 and P4 from this side, because we assume that this is silvered, um, another ray is identified whereby if the observer is here, they are actually able to see the images of these pins by what we would call parallel reflection. The image would appear to be there and the image of that one would appear to be there and that ray can be obtained. Through experiment, the student is expected to measure these angles. This one is measured, say 10. So the student by experiment is expected to find the different values of these other angles. Assume this is 15, this is 20. The student is expected to complete a table of results where they should be able to verify that the angle they get through experiment, which is R here, is actually approximately equal to the angle they used here as I. And several other angles can be measured, and by repeating through observation on the other side, the other rays can be obtained. And uh, finally, a graph, if it is to be plotted, of I against R should be able to give a straight line, should be able to give a straight line passing through the origin, verifying that actually angle I is equal to angle R. In other words, the slope one gets should approximately be equal to one. 
if the graph is sketched. That briefly describes the experiment that one can carry out to verify. It is important that students are able to read and master the steps they should use to describe this experiment to that effect because it is an exam question. After that, we need to look at reflection types or types of reflection. Ideally, there are two types of reflection. There are two types of reflection. And these two types um, um, regular, someone would use the word uniform, regular or uniform, reflection, and the other type can be irregular. Or diffuse reflection. Again, at ordinary level and A level, it is a common question that students can be asked to distinguish between regular and diffuse reflection. Students can be asked to distinguish between these two types. Distinguish between regular and diffuse reflection. Yeah, to attempt to answer this question, regular reflection is the type of reflection where light rays. The right rays are incident. First of all, we must indicate that this is a mirror. The right rays are incident on the mirror in a parallel mode. And they are reflected off again in a parallel mode. A student is expected to use a ruler to illustrate this given that light travels in a straight line. The incident rays are parallel and the reflected rays are also parallel. The mirror is smooth. It is smooth. The, play, the reflecting surface is smooth for regular reflection. That is number one. Two. Distinguish between regular and diffuse. For diffuse reflection, comparatively, the incident light rays one distinction is the light rays are parallel. Here, the light incident light rays are parallel, yes. For diffuse, 
but they are refracted because the refracting surface is non-uniform. Contrary to the situation here, this one is non-uniform, so the refracted rays are scattered. They are scattered. They are scattered. Refracted rays are scattered. There are two differences emphasized here already. That one, the refracting surface is smooth for regular refraction. And two, the refracting surface is non-uniform. Two, the incident parallel rays are reflected parallel. Here, the incident parallel rays are reflected in a different direction or in scattered directions. In different directions or in scattered directions. So if they ask you to distinguish between regular and diffuse reflection, one incident light rays are parallel upon reflection for smooth or regular reflection. Incident parallel rays are reflected in divergent or scattered directions. The refracting surface is smooth. The refracting surface is non-uniform or irregular. And by the way, what most students don't know and they usually are confused is that the laws of reflection that we stated at the start are always obeyed, irrespective of whether the surface is smooth or irregular. The laws of refraction, for example, if someone put a normal here, the angle of I measured here should uh, be in agreement with the angle of R. And the same thing should happen here, irrespective of the surface. The laws of refraction are obeyed. They are obeyed. And of course, we are saying that the surface is uniform. The surface is non-uniform. The incident parallel rays are reflected to give parallel reflected rays. Incident parallel rays are reflected to give divergent uh, reflected rays. The next important fact that we are going to share here is deviation of light. Deviation of light. What is to deviate? Deviate is an English word. Deviation of light. To deviate is to change from your original if I use language, your, your ori original statement to something different. Now, if we have light, we have seen that light can be refracted if it is incident. And it is refracted to a known direction. If this is light, a light ray or a where A is the point of incidence, it is reflected to pass through another ray, which I can call a beam. And we have seen from our previous information on during our introduction that this is angle I, and this is the glancing angle. Assuming there was no mirror here, Assuming there was no mirror here, this light would not have been reflected to pass through AB, so it would continue into the direction I am extrapolating. Now, the angle that is made between the would be direction, assuming there was no mirror, and the direction in the presence of the mirror is what we call the angle of deviation. If I call this D, D is the angle of deviation. 
D in this case is the angle of deviation. But using angle geometry, using angle geometry, I will emphasize here that if I have this and I extrapolate it, I like emphasizing while I'm teaching that if I extrapolate this and this angle is G, like it is in the upper diagram, this angle is equal and opposite to this angle. Equal and opposite to this angle. That means that this small angle here is G, the one below the mirror and between um, the extrapolated incident ray. This small angle here is G. But if this mirror is, if this ray is reflected there, and we have discussed together the laws of reflection, that if you have put a mirror here um, and you put a normal, this angle is equal to that angle. So if the normal is there and this is I, it implies that this is also I. Ideally, we know it is R, but for the laws of reflection, we have started. Uh, stated that I is equal to R. That implies that if this is 90, this one, and this is G and this is G, and this is I and this is I, by simple angle geometry, this would also be G. Therefore, the whole of this angle, which I'm calling the angle of deviation, D, would be G plus G. And therefore, our angle of deviation is always supposed to be equal to twice the glancing angle. It is always supposed to be equal to twice the glancing angle. It is always supposed to be equal to twice the glancing angle. Of course, we could show that um, more scientifically by taking a few statements that may go beyond what I've described. The angle of deviation for an incident ray making an angle G with a mirror is equivalent to G plus G which is two times the glancing angle. You can be asked to show that the angle of deviation is twice the glancing angle. Now, if we look at rotation, Rotation of the mirror. Assume this is our mirror. And we already have the angle of incidence as I, the glancing angle as G, and automatically the angle of reflection. This is R. If this is A and this is O and this is B, if this mirror is rotated, can be rotated in the clockwise direction or in the anticlockwise direction. Assuming we rotate it in the anticlockwise direction from position M, M1, to another position, say that position. Let me call this position one and this position two. If it is rotated to position two, it is usually rotated through an angle, say theta. Um, it implies if it is rotated without changing the 
position of the incident ray, then the incident ray will also rotate to give us a new position, which I will call position two, if this was position one. We are assuming the mirror has been rotated to this new position through an angle theta. This is still theta by alternate, without changing the incident ray. Usually we say that show that the angle between the initial reflected ray and the new reflected ray will be twice the angle of rotation. First of all, um, case one, I'll write it as D1. We have seen it is 2G. Now, case two, it is very clear that all of you can see with me that our glassing angle Our glancing angle now is G plus theta because the mirror is now assumed to be in this position. So the glancing angle is the angle the incident ray makes with the mirror. It is now G plus theta. Now our task is if this ray was to continue going through like that, our first D is this one, which I have called D1. Our next D is now supposed to be this one, which I will call D2. So our task is to find D2. Is to find D2. Diagrammatically, if this is G plus theta, and this is I, I means I, I have said the reflected ray shifts here, and therefore this I is supposed to be equal to this R now. But if this is G plus theta, our task is to show that D2 minus D1 is equal to, to what? Uh, remember our D1 is clear? Now, our D2, which is the whole of this, is what we need to get. And, uh, of course, basing on the diagram I have, majority of you will not be able to follow the proceedings here. This that I am trying to, fo to follow is the new position of the mirror, and that would imply that the whole of this is supposed to be G plus theta because it is still a glancing angle. It is still a glancing angle if the mirror shifts here. It's supposed to be equal to that. Now our task is to find out the whole of this. But remember this is G and this is theta. So it is still G plus theta. So our D2 actually will become, of course, for students, you are expected to use a little more illustrations. But I've said if this is the mirror position, from the mirror to the new reflected ray is G plus theta. But again, below the mirror to this uh, uh, extrapolated incident ray, is supposed to be G plus theta. So in the end result, our glancing, our D2 is twice the D, twice the glancing angle. And therefore, okay. And therefore, if we look at the, the net deviation, the net deviation, D will be equal to 2G plus 2 theta minus 2G, and we shall get our net deviation as 2 theta. Our net deviation would be 2 theta. Now, 
I am emphasizing that if a mirror is rotated through an angle, the angle of uh, the refracted ray would rotate through twice the angle of deviation. As I wind up today's lesson, my dear students, I want to challenge you to look at applications of plane mirrors where are plane mirrors used and also as you look at the applications I want to emphasize that one of them is the optical lever the optical lever galvanometer and uh, The other one is what we call the sextant. And I want to emphasize that one question that is always very common here is the properties of plane mirrors. Look at properties of plane mirrors. Images. Properties of plane mirror images, and also look at applications of plane mirrors. You will appreciate that most of you, when you go to saloons to cut your hair, many times you are seeing your images several times. And the reason you see those images is because there are several mirrors that are mounted on different walls in front and behind you. And those mirrors give what we call multiple reflections. When we meet next, we shall quickly look at applications and we shall look at uh, how many images a plane mirror can form and we shall derive expressions to show that light reflected on inclined plane mirrors will be deviated as well as we have seen this. If we have more than one mirror inclined to each other, then light can be deviated and we shall be able to look at how do we derive the deviation expression. I want to thank you. I want to thank the management of BBS TV. I want to thank the gentleman on camera, my producer, and the management of BBS TV. I thank you. I thank you, my students, for waking up to follow these lessons. And for now onwards, we shall be looking at section A, which is basically optics, because I told you section, paper two has four sections. We have so far discussed B, D, now we are on A. I wish you the best. God bless you. So, Mera Mudiro Lyo. Ngewa Gidua, Maryland High School, Elisangi Wentebe, Sumeru Yabawala Nabalenzi, Tuso Mesa Arts and Sciences, Okuvile Dela Kusini Yesoka, Okutu Kile Dela Kusini Yomukaga, Ngali Sangiwa Mchifechi Wewe Fogurunji, Tuline Bisule Yomulebe, Science Laboratory, Sakoni Computer Lab, Uwamune. She gives you her number, but your pen didn't work, and the bus is gone. Get a pen you can rely on, Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage our children to be excellent. Wamune. Congo University a private chartered university that offers world-class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us?
Wamune. Kids Kingdom Kindergarten and Day Care. So many of you are not at home. Oh, we're not going to get into a video. A video because any of you are not at home. We're not going to get into a video. A video because any of you are not at home. We're not going to get into a video. A video because any of you are not at home. We're not going to get into a video. A video because any of you are not at home. We're not going to get into a video.